Well, Razorback fans, we got to talk about it. Got to talk about it. What if Arkansas actually beats LSU this weekend? Let's dive into it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase Jace Case, providing you a personal injury supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. And get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday as we are getting closer and closer to game time with Arkansas and LSU. And as a reminder, tomorrow on the podcast, I'll be joined by Caroline Fenton of Locked On LSU as we'll do a little crossover action and talk about this game specifically and get her thoughts and opinions on what she makes of the game from the LSU perspective. So really looking forward to that. But, um, you know, we, we, we'll get into some injury updates with, with Rocket and uh, also get to some other moments too. But uh, I like to do this, as I've mentioned before, because I, I feel like I have to mention it. Some people just take it completely and totally out of context, which always cracks me up. Um, anytime Arkansas is heavily favored or favored in a game, I'm going to talk about why they could lose or what if they lose. And same thing when they are heavy underdogs. I'm going to talk about how they can win or possibly what if they win. And that's what we're going to do. Maybe I should have done on what if Wednesday and I started being a little bit more consistent there. But still, uh, that's the question today. With Arkansas being major underdogs, we're talking about 17, 18 point underdogs going on the road to Baton Rouge against LSU. What if Arkansas wins? What if Arkansas wins? I don't think anybody is expecting Arkansas to win this game. You can be hopeful. You can be optimistic. You can think, hey, maybe, just maybe. But when it comes to confidence, you know, no one, I don't think any of you is going on FanDuel right now trying to, to, to be able to put some money down on it, myself included. Like, I, I'm not going to predict Arkansas to win this game because I just, I think it's going to be too tall of a task for them to take, uh, take advantage of and to be able to, to make it work. But it's not to say that it's impossible because sometimes that happens with people. They like think it's impossible. It, 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 that there's just no way it can't happen. And you know, even in this game, which we'll talk about later too, there's been so many moments where it wasn't supposed to happen. Didn't think like Arkansas should have won those games, but they did. They found ways to win. And so, when, before we get into what if Arkansas wins, as far as the reaction, as far as the the, the results, and as far as the uh, the post feeling of uh, what that game would be. Let's look at like how that would look like. Like, what would it look like for Arkansas to win this game against LSU? Well, in my opinion, if Arkansas is going to win this game or at least have a, a good chance of winning this game, it's going to have to be dirty. It's going to have to be gross. It's going to have to be low scoring, which last year's game was extremely low scoring of 13 to 10. LSU won in Fayetteville. The year before that was pretty ugly too, 16 13 in overtime in Baton Rouge. And the year before that was 24 21. Honestly, pretty ugly there in Fayetteville during the COVID season. So the past three years, and these teams, of course, by three points, all of them have been pretty ugly. And I feel like that's the reason why Arkansas was even able to be in the position to possibly win the game. But especially in the one two years ago in Death Valley, that was the biggest key of like how that's going to look and how they're going to try to be down there and, and making something out of nothing this early part of the season, too. Now, it's a nighttime game, which is tough. But if Arkansas is going to win this game, it's going to have to be low scoring. Like if you told me the final score without telling me who won was, you know, like 21, 17, or uh, even going lower than that, like uh, 14 to 10, you know, so, something to that extent, I would be like, okay, well, Arkansas must've done their job or maybe even won. But if you told me the final score in this game was going to be uh, 45 to 21, I know who won that game. <laughs> you know, like I, I just know who won that game and it wasn't Arkansas. So that's, what's going to be the key is they're going to have to make it, Ugly, low scoring. I think Arkansas's defense is good enough to do that. LSU's offense is really good, too, and that's where it's kind of this whole unstoppable force and movable object. LSU's offense ranks as one of the best ones in the SEC, and Arkansas's defense, surprisingly and statistically, ranks as pretty good in the SEC. I don't say it's like one of the top ones, but it's pretty good. And when you're going to have those low scoring games, it's going to mean your defense gets stops. You keep Jaden Daniels in check. Uh, you, you have long, drawn-out drives. 
offensively, especially with the new rules in place. Uh, that's the type of way that it's going to have to be a, an ugly type of game. And also on top of that, like Arkansas is one of the best teams in the country, only through three games, but also the best in the SEC at turnover margin. Last week, they turned the ball over twice uh, with a pick, a pick and an, uh, a fumble. So besides all that, though, like they, that was their first two turnovers. And so they've been really good at the turnovers and really good at keeping that in a, in a good spot. Uh, uh, LSU has quite a few turnovers this year, and they have been a team that has either thrown interceptions or had some fumbles. And not to say that they're bad at it, but they've, they've definitely been significantly higher. So if you're going to make it ugly, if you're going to make it low scoring, Arkansas needs to get turnovers. They need to, you know, find ways to just put pressure on Jaden Daniels. Uh, when the ball is on the ground, you got to get it. You can't allow LSU to recover it uh, once again and get an offensive recovery. Like you got to be the one on top. You got to be the one making some plays. So to me, that's what it's going to look like if Arkansas is going to win. You just got to have turnovers. You're going to have to have uh, some some great defensive plays. Uh, the offense is going to have to stay on the field as much as possible. And honestly, like it, it's going to have to have some breaks go your way. Now that can be an assortment of things, but to me, the breaks that are also like for sure going to have to go your way, your way in this game is you're going to have to limit your penalties. Now you got to do that, but also officiating as we know, can sometimes be suspect that last, uh, I think I went back in I think it was a couple days ago. I watched, as I mentioned, the BYU game a lot. And some of those penalties that Arkansas got called for, I'm not saying that they were all bad and I'm not, and I'm not making excuses, but there were definitely some calls that were pretty suspect, pretty, nah, didn't really care for those. Don't feel like they should have been called. So you're going to need some of those breaks to go your way where, you know, on third and seven, when uh, LSU has the ball and they convert on the first down, they are the ones that get an offensive pass interference. You know, when they have a big play, they get a holding call that gets brought back. Uh, you know, when they, uh, you know, whatever it is, like the penalties, you have to shore up and be on your own, on, on point. And you have to hope that maybe in some of those cases that LSU gets some of those calls against you, which is, I know it's easier said than done, especially with the home field advantage that Baton Rouge provides, but you're going to have to have some of those things go your way. So turnovers, penalties, those are the basic things that uh, can really help you out as well as the defense. But it's also about getting points when you can in every way. If it's fourth and one from, uh, you know, we'll just throw out a number. Say it's the 40 yard line. If It's fourth and one. And it's in the fourth quarter, and you're down by three points. It's 13 to 10, something to that extent. I would rather you try the field goal. <laughs> try, try for the long 50-whatever-yard field goal and try to make that than try to go for it. Maybe that's a, not the, the best example as far as the yardage because that's still a pretty long field goal. But you see what I'm saying? Like If you, have, if you feel confident that you can get points on the board, and especially in the second half, if it's still lower scoring and points have been hard to come by, Get the points whenever you can. Don't worry about going for it on fourth down unless you absolutely have to. Get your points. Um, I, I want to see that. I want to see them be smart, extremely smart. Don't look at analytics. Look at Sam analytics, as he likes to say. Sam Pimmons said, look at the times where you're like, okay, that's how we're going to do it. So that's how it's all going to look. But the question becomes of, say all that happens. Say all of it happens. Say Arkansas does everything that they're supposed to do, and they win the game. Say if they go on the road and they beat one of the best teams in the SEC, LSU, doesn't matter what the final score is, but they beat them. Think about what happens from there. Suddenly, you look at the rest of the schedule for Arkansas and say, well, not saying we'll win every game left on the schedule, but there's not going to be a team that you don't think you have suddenly a better shot against. It's going to be the boost of confidence that just flows into this team that where it's like, hey, going on going up against... Uh, a team like you know, Texas A&M, we got the confidence. We got the confidence to go against Ole Miss. We got the confidence to go up against Alabama. Like You got the confidence to go along with it, and that just changes the game where you have that confidence now. Um, again, not to say that they'll win every game or that they'll even be favored in every game, but if you can go on the road to beat LSU, a good team like that at night in, in Baton Rouge, like who can't you go up against and beat? Like even Alabama, which will be the next toughest game, and I pr still probably wouldn't pick Arkansas to beat Alabama, but you suddenly feel like nobody is too much for you to handle. So that happens. And because you win and go on and play your toughest and on the road SEC opponent and you win, suddenly you feel like you're actually in the mix to possibly be an SEC West champion. 
Not saying it'll happen or I'll predict it, but you just feel like you're suddenly in position to where you can mix it up and you can you can do it. That, that next stretch and those next few games are going to be the toughest ones, but it's like you, you got confidence about it too. Uh, you really set LSU fan base into a whole new level of pissed off they've never seen before in their lives. Like they go way crazy. They're already were pretty upset after that Florida State game, but if they lose to Arkansas first in their second SEC game at home, that's early in the year, knowing they still got to play Florida, still got to play Alabama, still got to play Ole Miss and A&M, they, they, they ain't going to be happy. And they're going to be very, very upset because not only does that feel like the SEC West is in jeopardy, but the national championship hopes could go completely out the window. Uh, so you really, you really stir up a bloody hornet's nest if you find a way to win this game. So that's what happens. And I think all the fans get back on board with Sam Pittman, get back on board with this team, and get back on board with the direction they're going. That's the important thing. But that's why we play the what-if scenario. What if they win? No. I think we'll all be pretty happy, right? I'd like to think so. Folks, this uh, podcast is brought to you by Jace Medical. We're talking about the Jace case, if you will. They provide five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. And all it takes to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, jump on a quick call with one of their board-certified physicians. Get ongoing care from their physicians on any treatment-related questions. It's doctor-created as well as doctor-recommended. You don't want to ever be caught unprepared, especially with all the craziness going on in the world. If you have a family, if you have a lot of people in the household, you don't want to have any sort of issue having the right things you need at the house for any sort of emergency that comes your way. Everyone should feel empowered to care for themselves as well as their loved ones when the unexpected hits, and that's what the Jace case can do for you. You. So save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off using my promo code locked on at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. And $360 that you can save on it is always a very big deal. You can't put a price on saving and helping out the ones that you love the most. So check it out again at jacemedical.com using promo code locked on. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, So we have a little bit of an update, kind of, sort of, not really, but eh, a little bit of uh, Rocket Sanders because we know that he was uh, hurt in the Western Carolina game. We did not see him against Kent State. We did not see him against uh, BYU. Do we see him against LSU? Does he actually get into the game? Uh, Because we know how important he is and you know how good he is. Well, according to Sam Pittman, who had a press conference today, and uh, it was actually the SEC teleconference that happened today, he was asked about uh, Rocket Sanders and says, quote, I don't have an update on his status. He's He's progressing faster than what we thought he might, but I don't know whether he'll play or not. So what it sounds like is that they don't have a for certain update on whether or not he's going to play, but he's been looking good. He's been progressing. In fact, he's at a point to where we didn't think he'd be at right now, but we're still not going to say one way or the other of whether or not he's actually going to play or not. Uh, people can look into this however they want. I'm going to look at it to it into the way of, I think this is gamesmanship. I think that this is Sam Pittman being a coach of just like we see so many times in all of not only college sports, but just in the NFL and injuries in general, where they're not going to reveal too much. They're going to approach it as in, you know, um, yeah, he's, you know, he's going, he's going good. So he could play, but I'm not going to say he's going to play because we don't know yet, but he's going good. It's going good. So you'll just have to wait and see because then suddenly it's like, okay, well, do they know if he's going to play or not? Probably don't know. I, I would be shocked if we actually know before the game itself. I would be. Uh, maybe there's something that leaks or maybe there's some sort of report that comes out. Um, or maybe if there's something more serious about it, then Sam Pittman just addresses it. But I approaching it this way, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. There's gamesmanship involved and I'm fine with that. Like, I don't need to know. I don't have to know rocket Sanders right now on a Thursday, if he's playing or not. Like, I don't have to know that. I'd like to know just for the sake of the podcast, just like you would all like to know whether you not, you can count on him. But I don't have to know. All I care about is if he's if he is healthy, I want to see him on Saturday. I want to see him running out on that field in Baton Rouge and playing if he's ready to go. If he's not ready to go, if he's not healthy, 
Do not put them out there. Do not go through all that. Just roll with what you got and hope for the best. So that's my whole point about it is like I some people get fed up or some people get tired of it. And I think that Sam Pittman's done a great job of graduating from the school of Kirby Smart, who graduated from the school of Nick Saban, of uh, handling your business in a certain way. You don't reveal too much. Uh, you maybe do reveal something that may be like misdirection towards the other thing. But the thing is, is like when it comes down to it, if Rocket Sanders does play this weekend, what type of impact is he going to have? Is he going to be that big of a difference maker for Arkansas if he plays? My answer to that is yes, yes, because you need all the help you can get. You're going to need all the bodies, all the people. And you can tell me that, oh, yeah, by the way, it's uh, you're going to have a preseason All-American out there at the running back position. Yeah, I'll take that. I will take that. So will you. So will everybody else. Uh, does it go from Arkansas uh, losing the game to suddenly Arkansas is winning the game? I don't know if it's that if it's that big of a difference, but it is a difference. And so I really would like to see Rocket Sanders play uh, this weekend as a uh, man. It'd just be good to have him back on the field because I know he's been definitely missed uh, in the rushing attack, and he's a really good player and want to see him showcased, which might be his final year here at Arkansas. Folks, this episode is brought to you by Markel. From Fayetteville to El Dorado and everywhere in between, Markel has been helping Arkansas small business community for over 30 years. Markel is a global specialty insurer with a truly people-first approach because to them, insurance is more than just a piece of paper. It's a promise to help people get back on their feet. We spend a third of our lives working, so on-the-job injuries can be expected. You work hard to build your business, so it's important to make sure that you and your employees have the right insurance coverage. Whether you're new to the business or celebrating a 25th year anniversary, whether you have one employee or a thousand employees, Markel aims to understand your workers' compensation insurance needs. So find a local independent agent to get a free workers' compensation insurance quote today at markelinsurance.com slash locked on. That's M-A-R-K-E-L insurance.com slash locked on. Markel, insuring America's small businesses since 1930. Insurance carrier coverage, dividends, and services availability may vary by state. Markel is a registered trademark of Markel Group Incorporated. This podcast is also brought to you by FanDuel because you want to snap into the action this NFL season with FanDuel, which is America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. And we know you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, and there's no better time to get on it than right now with these great deals that they have going on. And the app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of things like spreads, player props, over and unders, and so much more. And there's even a special going on with Arkansas and LSU this weekend where they'll be offering 50% profit boost valid with a three-plus leg same-game parlay. So you got to check that out, and that's just for Arkansas and LSU. So check that out, too. And if you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, They'll get you all taken care of. Again, fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so a final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, you know, I talked about yesterday about if Arkansas and LSU is actually a rivalry. And a lot of people started bringing up like some of their favorite moments and whatnot in the, in the times that uh, these two teams have met and how many iconic moments there actually used to be, at least in Arkansas history. And, you know, the first thing I ever think about is actually when Arkansas beat LSU, the first time I remember well is was the Miracle on Markham there in uh, Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium and seeing Arkansas win that game in the fashion they won that game against Nick Saban and LSU and knowing that the winner – Whoever won the game goes to the SEC championship game, and that's what happened, and Arkansas took care of business. And people forget, like, that game was really disgusting. Arkansas played, like, absolute garbage for the majority part of the game. At least the offense did. Offense was trash. Matt Jones had one of his worst games ever. He's even admitted to it. But nobody cares and nobody remembers, and rightfully so, because at the end of the game, they went down the field, drove in just a couple plays, got the touchdown, and ended up winning. So that's always the moment I'm going to think of first is the Miracle on Markham uh, part one. And uh, making it to SEC Championship and making it to Atlanta. Uh, another moment that I'll always remember is in 2007, where you had the game against LSU, who was number one in the country. Uh, they were just dominating people. I think their only loss up to that point was a triple overtime game to Kentucky when Andre Woodson was there over in Lexington. But they really were in the control of their own destiny. And they're like, hey, we're, we're gonna get, just got to get through Arkansas, this seven and four team, and take care of business. And then Arkansas won a triple overtime. Darren McFadden had a, had a field day against LSU just like he did every year. Holds up the, the big bat and say, you know, we got that wood. That was always a, a cool thing, too, and very memorable. And then in 2010, 
uh, that that game where Arkansas, whoever won that game, but Arkansas did win. Whoever won that game ends up going to the Sugar Bowl and uh, representing the SEC that way. Down in War Memorial once again, Kobe Hamilton right before halftime. Uh, the long run uh, all the way to the end zone, and uh, that was the second one of the day for him. And then the Joe Adams fourth and three call where uh, Ryan Mallett, one five, rest in peace, hit him on a big play. So just, like, those are the three games that I'll always remember. Like, 2015 was great. Like, 2014 was great. Um, you know, every win against LSU was always great. But those are the three that are always going to stand out to me and just be some of the best moments in this series. And uh, I'll just, I don't know, maybe they can make another one this weekend against 20, in 2023 uh, for Arkansas and LSU. But it's going to be a tall task. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razor Max Podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.